couple years ago, I picked up my hands on one of the first 20 watt Recreate Visions. This was the very first one that they came out with. And since then, they've actually come out with a 40 watt and not even released yet. I got my hands on the first Pro version. So this is a 45 watt Recreate Vision, revision of the vision. WeCreate has made a name for themselves with the auto lifting type system. It's, it's the only one out there where the entire module lifts up. You don't have to deal with the riser bases and the built-in cameras make the autofocus and the part setup a breeze. So the big question is if they've already got a 20 and 40 watt, well, what's the deal with the Pro? The first and foremost, you can tell from the name 45 watt, all engravers are kind of rated off of their wattage. It's the output wattage of how strong the laser is. What does that tell you? It pretty much tells you how thick of a material you can cut. Let's talk about just soft woods for right now. The 20 watt can do about a 10 millimeter, the 40 watt about a 15 millimeter, and the 45 Pro is a whopping 25 millimeter. Now, I actually don't cut that thick of material. Yeah, it's right about 25 millimeters. I, I don't have anything this thick actually to even test out or cut. So stacking up all of my little test materials, theoretically one pass, it could cut through all of these at once. Another thing you may or may not, these might be cut off a little bit, but the Pro is actually a good couple inches bigger in engraving area than the 20 watt or the 40 watt. And just because I'm not gonna have all of this memorized, just so then we know the overall engraving dimensions for the 20 watt right here, it's, it's about 16 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. And for the Pro, check this out. You get a 22.8 inches by 15 and three quarter inches. Definitely an awesome upgrade and that's still not the thing I'm most excited about. The one thing that we got to take a step back for and talk about with engravers is a spot size. It's a laser. So there's going to be a spot or a size of that laser that it is engraving and cutting. For the smaller type of lasers engravers, it's got a smaller size. So you can get those finite details. You can do that paper and, and the fine stuff on leather and that kind of stuff. So the 20 watt, is actually has a smaller spot size than the 40 watt version. That was one of my biggest fears was getting a larger engraver. I don't do or cut the larger type stuff. And so I was kind of like, well, the 20 watts actually been perfect for me and it's got the smaller spot size. And sure enough, with the Pro version, they were thinking of that and they came out with an amazing laser that actually has a smaller spot size than the 20 watt. and just check out how fine of a line that laser is. They're able to get that super small focus spot point from what they're calling a beam focus technology. I'm not a laser engineer. All I know is that it works. In other words, they're able to focus that laser beam to that small of a point, which in turn not only gives you the small spot point, but it also allows you to engrave faster and thicker material. Now, I said before I, I didn't have any 25 millimeter thick um, basswood or softwood. I did find some 20 millimeter plywood. Now this is plywood, so it's a lot um, denser, thicker, whatever. And it wasn't able to get quite all the way through. I was able to get 15 millimeters out of that plywood, which for a 45 watt machine is pretty amazing. And on their website, they go on to say that even though it's a 45 watt, with that beam technology, they're truly putting out a 60 watt type beam laser. All I know that is, it works. There are a ton of similarities between the machines themselves. For example, the height, even though it's not really shown because this one's in the shipping mode, so it's actually down further. But in the raised position, they can both do the same height of objects. And WeCreate really does an excellent job of making these out of the box type engravers. Now taking a look at the back really quick, it's very simple and it is actually identical between the two. You've got the air assist power. It's just a simple little two switch or a two wire connection. Then the air input, it's a simple tubing with a push connect on off button. 
then your power in and then your cord if you want to use a cord you can go wi-fi as well your exhaust port and an antenna Lots of engravers make you download Lightburn, which is an excellent program, but you have to pay for it. We create their app. It's a free download, autofocus, click print, and watch the magic happen. And one thing I haven't touched on is the actual enclosure itself. Lots of the introductory type diode lasers, they're just that open frame type deal. And, and technically you shouldn't look at the Actually, not technically. You should not look at the laser for any open type system. That's, they'll give you special glasses and that kind of stuff. These ones are fully enclosed, which is twofold. It does help considerably with the air extraction. And then also you'll notice that this glass, it's got a nice orange tint to it. So it makes it so then you can look at the laser while it's actually engraving. And with these enclosures, they are both considered class one enclosures. It's just a great feature that you actually see with nicer type engravers. Now, the main thing you might be wondering about price, of course, the pro is going to be more, but is it worth it? And how much more than just, let's say this 20 watt version. So this guy right here, the very basic package, 20 watt version, it's $1,300. And then the 40 watt version is $1,700. And then for the 45 watt pro, the base price is gonna be $1,900. So let me take a step back and go into dial lasers. I mentioned that at the beginning. And as far as an introductory type laser, you'll want a dial laser. It's just that there's a couple things that they can't do that say a CO2 laser can. For example, if you're wanting to do a whole bunch of different types of metals, then we create actually has an IR type laser. It's just a small two watt to do all of those metal engravings. So they got that and taken care of. But the one main thing that I pull my CO2 laser out for that I can't do with a dial laser is cutting clear acrylic. It can still engrave clear acrylic. And in reality, I've used actually my 20 watt machine for Many of these little night lights, my boys love them and they are awesome. They are perfect for gifts and everything. Just there's a couple extra steps that you need to do to be able to engrave on clear acrylic. So watch my video in the link description on how to do that. And really that takes care of like 99% of the projects or items you would want or need to do with a dial laser. I will tell you the one trick for clear acrylic is that you need a black backer. So black cardstock works amazing. It does leave some residue, but you quickly just wash that off and it turns out amazing. I would say if you need that extra large engraving area or that really finite precise spot area, well, the pro version, it's awesome and it will do just great. And if not, then Hey, you got the 20 watt version. I, I would say if you're really on the fence between the 20 or 40, I would bump it up to the 40 and get the pro. So just get out there and start engraving.